Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is a seventh period review with a bunch of it, a few AP biologists. Say hi. hi. Um, right off the top, I want to tell you this will be a shadow quiz, and who will be in our shadow in this quiz? Chapter two. Chapter two. So you want to definitely review that. All right. So this one was all about control of growth responses. So big ticket items we need to know. You want to review your signal transduction pathway. So the hormone would be called the, when I say signal transduction pathway, the hormone would be the signal. signal, exactly. And a signal has to have either uh, the ability to cross the cell membrane and go inside and meet with um, another molecule inside or on the surface it needs to right stand at the door and knock and it'll bind to a what girl stroke is, will bind to a what receptor. receptor good okay that binding to the receptor will trigger a series of reaction that's the transduction signal transduction the pathway at the end of that path is some sort of response Generally speaking, you're turning some genes on or off, or you're allowing some molecule to come in or out. Now, this is an example, if it does not go into the cell, if the hormone does not go into the cell, a secondary messenger could be triggered inside the cell, like allowing calcium or something to come in. Remember, cells do not have eyes, they don't have mouths, so the only way to communicate is either direct cell to cell, like we'll see in our immune system, or releasing a chemical of some sort. That's how they talk to one another. And remember, you've got trillions of cells that need to act in a coordinated fashion, so this is critical to maintain the homeostasis. Good. So then the next part was talking about just the different hormones that there are and what each do. Some of the early studies with Darwin and his son. And another man, his name is Went, look, looked at coleoptiles and realized that the chemical that was making it bend in the light, it was an, a chemical message, not an electrical message. And one of oxen's big roles is this. What is that called? What are you seeing right here when I talk about moving to the shady side and growth? Phototropism, exactly. So when you have a tropism, you're either going toward or what? Away from some sort of stimulus, right? So in this case, the shoot goes where? Toward. So, yeah, the shoot's growing towards the light. How does it accomplish that task? We unpack this later, but at this point, you should already know. Oxen is, goes down from the tip, right? and it moves to the what side? Shady, shady side. side of the plant. It then causes the cells on the shady side to what? Expand, Expand or elongate. And the side, on, the, on the sunny side, they're not. So the only thing that can happen if the ones on the shady side elongate, it's gonna bend the plant towards the light. Okay? And that is an example of phototropism, and that's one of the big functions of oxen. Remember, you don't need to know all the plant hormones, but their names are so simple you might as well because you could use it in support of some other essay. So let's think in our mind, if we can just even remember all the names of the different hormones. Think in your head. Okay, and what's the first one you would tell me? Oxen, okay? And, and, because it's also on the board. So, Phototropism, we've just discussed that, okay? And we'll talk about these other ones, but what's another hormone you could tell me? Gibberellins. Gibberellins, that's our party hormone. What does he encourage those to do? Break dormancy. Who's dormancy? Seed. Seed and bud. Se yeah, you've gotta have break your bud dormancy before you form a seed and have a seed to break dormancy of, right? Flower before the seed. Okay, seed and bud dormancy. What else does gibberellin cause you to do? Get bigger, right? Okay, so we got oxen, we got gibberellin. Give me another one. Cytokinin. Cytokinin. What word comes to mind when we see that? Cytokinin. And this is growth through making more cells. 
Perfect. Give me another one. Um, ethylene. Ethylene. And how do we remember ethylene? Old Aunt Ethel. Her fruit is ripe and it has dropped. <laughs> yeah. Old Aunt Ethylene has ripe fruit and it's all like dropped. However, you, you're going to remember that. Okay. So um, I need another one. Abscisic acid. acid. Now, when I hear acid, that doesn't say to me, go, go, go. That says stop. 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 And abscisic acid works in short-term ways and long-term ways. What are the short-term ways abscisic acid can work? Stomata. Closing stomata. Good. Closing stomata. What's a long-term way? Uh, promotes dormancy. Promotes dormancy. Okay. It's in direct opposition to who? Gibberellins. Good. Okay. It's saying slow down. It's winter. Let's get rid of these leaves. They don't do anything for us anymore. So that would be the long-term effects of abscisic acid. Short-term, close the stomata. Long-term, get ready for winter. Oxen sometimes works in conjunction with another hormone quite frequently. What is that other hormone it might work with? Cytokinin. And that, it's the ratio of oxen to cytokinin which determines whether you have shoot growth, root growth, flower, okay? And when we say things like oxen and cytokinin and ethylene, those are big umbrella names for a whole group of, you know, it's a group of hormones. There are many different actual individual hormones in there. You just don't need to know those. Okay, so phototropism, we have. Check. Gravitropism for oxen. Now, for these types of things like phototropism and gravitropism, you could have both what? Positive and negative. negative. Right? So a shoot would exhibit what kind of phototropism? Positive in the shoot and what? Negative, Negative in the root. Whereas when we talk about gravitropism, we want to be what in the shoot? Negative, negative. negative in the shoot and what? Positive in the root. We want to go with gravity. Right? Are there exceptions to that rule? Sure. Okay? Apical dominance. What is apical dominance about? Branching. What? Branching. Branching. And what does apical dominance do? Prevents it from branching. Yeah, prevents it from branching. Because as your plant grows, as your plant grows up, you want your biggest branches on the bottom. Okay? You want your biggest branches on the bottom. So apical dominance says no to branching. Okay, and so you've got to get the shoot away enough and then the branching can happen. That's advantageous for a couple of reasons. Let's hear some reason. Why is that an ad a good adaptation? Okay, you don't want it to be top heavy. Don't fall over. What else? Pardon what? Oh, yes, it does do that, but something else I'm looking for. Yeah, it increases photosynthesis because your biggest, if you're, if you right away, you had coming out of the, when it first grew, that was your biggest branch, it would do what to all the branches below it? Shade it. Okay, so you don't want to throw any shade. Okay, so you want to wait until it's up, you know, high enough and then um, lets the lower branches be dominant. Okay, seed development. Okay, so... Um, oxen assist with seed development. And what's thigmotropism? Yes? Moving around an object. Yeah, moving around an object, it's a response to touch. A response to touch is thigmotropism. So I have some pictures in here to show you that. So this is a good example of phototropism. What would this be a good example of? What kind of gravitropism? Negative. Negative gravitropism. Because it's, it could be that the light is over here, but this plant is laying sideways, and so it's saying no, we got to turn up. So the shoots, turn up. Okay, so the shoots are going to come up. That would be then um, negative gravitropism, and the roots would start to turn down. That would be what? Positive gravitropism. Here we can see apical dominance. You just, if you pinch off the, the bud, the apical bud, then you can see branching. 
normally it would prevent any other secondary branches there. Um, oxen, oh, whoops, let's go again. So how oxen works, um, so remember, oxen, there's two ways to grow. Make more cells or take the cells you have and make them bigger. So oxen, it's the acid growth hypothesis. So pump some hydrogen ions into your cell wall. That lowers the pH. pH, weakens the wall. So if you have some, yeah, vacuoles that start to swell with water, the, the cell wall isn't pushing back anymore, it's getting stretched. And then you just need to make sure to make some more cell wall materials to rebuild your wall once you've stretched it out. Okay, so that's the acid growth hypothesis. Great example of a signal what? Transduction pathway. Because oxen triggered all these different things inside the cell. You, one result is to weaken by allowing that proton pump to work. Um, another op a secondary option you had was getting the, it, the DNA transcribed and translated to build more cell wall components. Okay. All right, and Jib, jib, jibberellin. Okay, allowing um, the it stands outside, allows calcium in, binding the DNA, and also allowing cells to what? Elongate. Elongate. Good. And the ones on the right have gibberellin. We talked about breaking seed and what? What else do gibberellins do? Break seed and bud dormancy. Good. So here you can see calcium, the second messenger coming in binding with another protein which then triggers the synthesis of more cell wall components and to build it bigger. With gibberellins without. Um, okay, and here, it, this also makes that fruit that's just standard size, it makes it what? Exactly. Bigger. The choking Costco grapes. They're so big. Okay. Okay, cytokinins, what, what do we hear in that? Cytokinesis, tell me what stage this is. What? Interphase moving into prophase. And then this is prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Good, just checking. And so it promotes cell division in conjunction with auxin and the ratio that it has determines whether you have flowers, leaves, fruits, or shoots. Um, also, whoops, here it is. Um, cytokinins prevent senescence, and senescence is aging. So they'll maintain the petiole, whereas something like abscisic acid will cause an abscission layer so that the leaf will fall. So cytokinin works in opposition to abscisic acid. It's abscisic acid's long term. All right. And then moving on to abscisic acid, Everything else about was about go, go, go. This is about no, 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 stop, stop, stop. And so it induces um, winter, getting ready for winter and also, also closing um, the stoma. And how does it accomplish that? Okay, well we know the proton pump pumps, if we wanted to open up the stomata, use your proton pump, pump who out? Hydrogen out, who takes its place? Potassium. And when you do that, who follows the potassium? Water. Water. And the stoma what? <laughs> Open. So now we need the potassium to go out. So what are we going to do? The abscisic acid right here, it's binding to a receptor. What does it cause? It causes calcium to go in. Now who's going to go out? Potassium. And who's going to follow? Water. So the abscisic acid here is a receptor. That receptor signal transduction pathway triggers the calcium gates to open. Calcium goes in, potassium goes out, and the guard cells get flaccid. Okay, moving on to ethylene. Ethylene causes uh, her fruit, it, it causes it to ripen, causes it to drop. And this is why we can say one bad apple, what? Yeah, spoils the barrel, and it's a gaseous hormone, so it influences other fruit. It can influence other fruit on a tree, 
it could influence other fruit in your fruit bowl at home and, and causes that. Okay, and then any questions on that part? You comfy? We then switched into plant defenses. We said it could be physical. It could be spines. It could be thick bark. Physical structures that protect. It could be chemical. It could be biotic defenses. You could invite um, some other bug to help defend you by releasing a chemical to entice another bug to eat your enemy. Um, the enemy of your enemy is your friend, right? And so invite them in. You could use chemicals to induce them to molt when they're not supposed to molt so they'll stop eating you. Um, you could produce chemicals in stinging hairs that would bother them. You could protect yourself similar to an immune system. If you have a pathogen coming in and attacking you, again, you can have a receptor for that. Signal transduction pathway, you send a signal. And here we looked at systemin, which then can go through the entire systemin, right, of the plant, system of a plant, and then protect the rest of the cells. They can also, if there's a wound, they can create, if, um, like, do you know what they do when there's a fire coming, like, like over the hillsides, there's a fire coming in their home? Do you know what they do? What they might do ahead of time to prevent it from burning so close to the home? They set, the rest of them on fire. they set other ones on fire. They set a backfire. And by setting that backfire around the house that they can control, then the fire never gets close enough because that area is already burned. Plants do something similar. When there is some pathogen coming in and it's eating over here, let's say, and destroying, they'll have all these cells commit suicide. So they're like, what's the key point? Okay, they all die and then they don't have a conduit to get to the other cells. So it's another way to protect yourself, okay? Brilliant. All right. So here's somebody calling a bug. Here's um, an acacia tree with ants. And this is a good example of a what kind of relationship? Symbiotic. Symbiotic specifically, mutualistic. Also an example of coevolution. Yeah, okay. Um, because that by, they're both better off by pushing each other to, um, to have these adaptations, right? Yes? Okay. Now let's move on to tropisms and Mr. Broccoli, okay? We have already reviewed phototropisms and gravitropism and actually already mentioned thigmotropism. And so here's just a response to light. There is, we agree and we know plants respond to light, but what are the plant's eyes? And so there's a pigment, right, that can absorb the light and it's like a toggle switch and they start to convert themselves from uh, PFR to PR. And in the process of converting, there's a ratio of PR to PFR, so the plant knows what time of day it is. And as the sun starts to go down, the PFR levels are starting to increase, and then they'll get ready for their evening. Um, and I'll show you that slide again in just a minute. Thigmotropism. Here you are unequal growth due to contact with a solid object. Why would this do this? What is our adaptation here? What is our purpose? Yes. Oh, we could want to block other plants. Now let's not be malicious. What could be another purpose? Support, right? We're in a herbaceous plant. We don't have the ability to grow really tall, like a strong, sturdy tree. We don't have secondarily thickened walls. We don't have any sclerenchyma to support ourselves. So let's just creep up somebody who does. That's like somebody not being able to walk, and so somebody else helps them along. They're still upright and moving, but they really don't have the legs for it. These herbaceous plants don't have the legs to stand on their own. So they'll creep up somebody else and hang on to them. That would be the advantage of that. Um, Maybe you want to respond to touch because you want to consume something because you're living in a nitrogen deficient soil. So you're going to catch a bug or something to um, digest. If your whole, this is just one area of the plant moving. If the whole plant is responding to it, that's when you have thigmomorphogenesis. Okay. 
And in this case, this would be like a sturdy tree prepared for the winds coming at it at one direction. What are we viewing right here? How would you describe that picture? What is that? Do you know what that is? It's a sprouting corn um, fruit. <laughs> That's its root. What is it doing? Yes, yeah, say it. You're right. Say my name. Say my name. What is it? Gravitropism. What kind of gravitropism? Positive gravitropism. Okay. Now, oxen works differently in roots than it does in shoots. Okay. Oxen will go and sink to the side um, here of where the, the, the base and the roots on top, those are the ones that are going to elongate. So if you look here, here's when it's coming straight out. Those cells are both the same size, right? If you look right here, the top and the bottom of the root are the same size. Now, the bottom is the same size, but the top of the root, those cells have gotten bigger. Do you see that? So in oxen, it goes to the bottom, and in oxen, what we saw in the shoot is the side that the oxen's on, that side elongates. But in the root, the side that's not on the bottom is the one that elongates, where the oxen isn't. Are you with? Um, and how do you know that it's on the bottom? The thick, heavy starch granules sink to the bottom of the root. So that way, even if you take the plant and you turn it sideways, now the starch is going to fall to the lower levels. Okay. All right. Um, and then, nastic. I always think spastic, nastic. Nastic movements are like when the leaves close really quickly. Again, what would be an adaptation for that? Why? Why would you do this? Yes. Yeah, if some bug lands here and he's going to start eating you, you just close your leaves. Whoops, they fall. Okay, so that can protect you. And then sleep also, um, I think it's called the prayer plant, I think, closes his, you know, during the night, protective, and then he'll expand back out when there's light. Okay, so we said oxen has a lot um, to do with, with all of these. We, we talked about that. Um, let's talk about photoperiodism. Um, I already told you about this. Could I please have, not it, pass or play? I want to give you a chance to verbalize it. Go ahead. Okay, so here's my sun. As it moves through the sky, okay, it's releasing that red light, okay, and it's receiving that red light, and it's converting the PR into what state? PFR. And as it goes down, okay, then you're going to primarily, oh, I'm already thinking of my sun. There's an eclipse. Um, so now we have PFR. And then throughout the night, it's going to slowly, during the night, switch back to the PR where we started. So it's ready to receive it. So that's how you can tell day from um, night. Now, the next issue is, okay, great. I know night from day. I know which direction the light's coming from. Check, 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 check. Now, some plants will only flower maybe once or twice during the year. How do they know when to flower? Some plants are called long day some plants are called short day but you and I know that's an inaccurate name because it's not the length of the day it's the length of the night and I encourage you next time you're in a nursery look and see I'm curious I think I still have the tags back there what it says about our peppers if they're short day or long day plants okay and I think we need to plant those and those we can see if we can grow some peppers before school's out because those we won't take the leaves off of but these you have to destroy. <laughs> okay. um, and so when you get in these scenarios here, if it is a short day plant, it needs a critical amount of nightness 
before it will flower. Because this one, it didn't, it's a short day, so it needs a long night. The night isn't reaching that critical length, which can vary, obviously, for different plants. It won't flower. Here, it looks like it may have met the critical length, but there has been a what? Flash, an interruption, right? So now it will not flower. Okay, discuss over these with your bio buddy, problem solve without me, and then I'll click on them. Did you get it right? And remember it needs, oh, hi. Come back here. Remember it needs a short night. So this one flowers because it didn't go over the maximum. Before we had a minimum number, but now we're a short night, there is a maximum before it's not considered short anymore. Okay, no flowering. And what's gonna happen here? Flower, it's gonna flower. Because we had nidus interrupted. Okay, good. And then there are things like tomatoes, which are day neutral. And um, things like germination, what's gonna help germinate? What's a hormone that's gonna help facilitate that process? Chiparellins. Breaking what? Seed dormancy. And they need to have the appropriate amount of light, okay, the appropriate amount of moisture. It may be germination is triggered by um, fire of some sort. Um, because that means if there's been a fire through the area that it's cleared all the other extraneous plants away so now you're gonna have plenty of light you're not gonna be shaded out um, there was a I don't know what it was it was some sort of fruit and it would not germinate unless it moved through the digestive system of a dodo bird so when the dodo bird became extinct so too did that fruit that was the scarring effects of going through a dodo bird just don't how that ever evolved I, I can um, photomorphogenesis, okay? In this case, when plants are in the dark, they're gonna focus not on making leaves, right? Because what's that gonna get you? Nothing, because there is no what? Light. So focus on what kind of growth? Upwards growth. Do you wanna focus on making chlorophyll? No, why? There's no light, okay? so. Don't waste your energy, but on upward growth, trying to go, where is the sun? Okay, so keep growing until you see the sun, and then you can green up. So etiolation is an adaptation for growing in the dark. Very pale stems, leaves don't expand, short roots, you're all about the upward growth. Then you can green once you come in contact with light. That's a good strategy for a plant, right? Focus your resources where you need them. So if you have the ability to go, okay, we are 100% PR, we're not going to PFR, you have to have the presence of the PFR, right? Get yourself to green up and expand your leaves. That's a good way for a cell to be aware of its surroundings, of its environment. Okay, and then phytochrome and competition. If you have plenty of light and you get enough, you know, red light during the day, so you're converting to PFR, no worries. But if somehow others are shading you, so you have low amounts, then what you want to do is you want to focus your growth on being what? Taller. So that you can overcome them and have less shade around your environment. You might also secrete some chemicals into the soil to ruin their roots. Just saying, that's another adaptation that you could have. All right, um, and here we go. Uh, 818 number number, I believe. Is it starting? Okay. Oh yeah, I can see that right here. There should be 10 of you. Let's go. I only see seven. I see eight. There should be 10. <laughs> Misspelled Frappuccino. Shaka Khan. Okay. 
Most of you got tropism. What do you mean causes fruit ripening? Who was it? Oh, Frappuccino. It's Frappuccino to you. Focus Frappuccino. Frappuccino. Frappuccino needs a hug. You're not getting enough attention. Who, fo who do I focus on for cell division? Cytokine. And somebody else said F. Causes stomachs to close. No. Who does that? Abscisic acid. Abscisic acid. What's wrong with you? Sweater weather. Don't hang out with Yeah, but no one should No one is it Frappuccino? <laughs> you know I could find out which one of you is yes. Frappuccino. You know that yes. I have that ability, right? Do, yeah. do it. Wait. Christian Okay, Ian. Yay. Everybody a show of right now. Okay, if, don't stay up too late. And if it is late, go get a piece of... Don't. Maybe put jam on it. And what else? Maybe a piece of cheese. I don't know. Or honey. That sounds good.